Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, I'm Jeanette from Sporiqua Sewing and Crafts. This video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be embroidering a laundry bag. Um, just to give you guys a show um, of what the bag looks like. This is a bag that I picked up off of Amazon. Um, I have a, a friend of mine whose son is graduated high school, is going to college. And these are really, really popular with college students. So one of the things that I like about this bag is that it actually has the back, the um, straps for the back, so that the students can wear, here and I'll show you, so the students can wear the, the bag as, a, you know, the laundry bag as a backpack, okay? Which is pretty handy. So um, one of the things that I wanna do is I wanna personalize this bag for him as a gift. So um, I know I look a mess, don't worry, I just got up early in the morning and um, I gotta get this done. So, <laughs> so I'm not worried about looks. You guys should just worry about the information. All right, so anyway. Um, now, I had printed out different sizes. This is about one inch and this is two inches. What I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna do a two and, I mean, no, a one and a half inch font. This is a college font and um, one of the things that, that this really became easy is right out of the bag, it was already folded at a center point. Now I can see the sticker came out, but I had a little green sticker. I like to mark my center points with stickers, okay? And I can see that it kind of came out, but I, I do see the crease of where it was. So I'm gonna put that right back of where I want the name to be. I want it to be somewhere in here. I don't want it to be somewhere too much on the top because you got to remember that they, they kind of crunch it up. So I kind of wanted a little bit above here. So I think right above the pocket. So I think this is going to be a perfect spot and it's going to be about an inch and a half. So um, I think I dropped the papers. Let me show you what, the, what they're going to look like. Sorry about that. Um, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. The name is going to be somewhere in the middle. This is the two inch. And, um, to me, I think it's, it's a little bit too big. This is the one inch. I think it's a little too small. I think I'm going to go an inch and a half. So an inch and a half, I think it's perfect. Um, I think it's going to be just the right size for this type of laundry bag. Um, also what I am going to do is instead of using regular, thread i'm going to use 40 weight thread but this is the one that is i think it's called vet gated or vet veteran gated or something like that i call it the multi multicolor thread i like this it's gold and brown and i think this thread would look really nice on this laundry bag so anyway guys um i already created this file on embrillance all you have to do is just write it out and you know and save it i've already saved it on the usb port so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to hoop this and i see that the sticker doesn't stay on and that's okay because i already know my center point is this crease right here so i'm good okay so um let me just put the sticker somewhere else what i'm going to be using to hoop this is i was thinking of using the hooping station but you know what i'm just going to use the table um for now, let me just undo this. How it is like. And this is going to be a little bit kind of difficult to hoop because it has the handles in the back, so it's not really like a flat thing that I, you know, flat service that I'm working on. But that's okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do to make sure that this is hooped perfectly and that it does everything perfect, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to print out the one and a half inch, and then I'm just gonna tape it on here so that I know exactly where I want it to be. So I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I already uh, printed this out. And I'm looking at this, it looks like uh, this doesn't look like much of a difference. Maybe I did do an inch and a half, and I'm over here thinking this was the one inch. I think this is, this is the inch and a half a little small but you know what I think this is gonna work I'm just gonna use this usually what I'll do is I'll cut this and I'll you know and I uh paint I tape it to where I actually want it to be okay now one of the things that is good about 
printing out the template is that it actually tells you where the middle of your design is. So if you look really closely, you're gonna see like there's like a cross right in here, right? So what I usually do is that cross, I align it to my center point right here. And then I make sure that it's exactly straight in the way I want it to be. And I'll put it down a little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. I think this is perfect. And I like the way it's aligned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my template onto the item. Okay, and I'm gonna tape it pretty good because I just don't want it to move now. I mean, you will take it off once, you know, once you're on the machine before you start embroidering. So you don't border on top of this. So. All right, so I have taped on pretty good. All right, that's good, that's awesome. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to put the stabilizer and the hoop right underneath. So I'm going to be using the Mighty Hoops. If you were using a single needle machine, because you can do this with a single needle machine. The reason why I say you can do this with a single machine, and you could, and you could even do it if you had a riser on your single needle machine, is because this is so big, okay? Because this is so big, the embroidery uh, bed would fit underneath it. And what I'm talking about is when you have a riser, what you're doing is you're lifting up your embroidery machine. And when you lift up the embroidery machine, right, you have that space that's underneath. But the thing is, then you have to think about this angle right here, how wide this is. So if this was going to be embroidered on a single needle machine, of course, I would have this hooped and this will go in the riser, right? This would be on top of a riser, all right? And then what will happen is I can just see how neatly it fits right inside. And then I would go ahead and I would just embroider and it would move really nicely. So this is a great project to do if you have an embroidery machine riser for your single needle machine. Just something that I wanted to point out. And... The thing is, to hoop this isn't a big problem either. Because of the large size, right, all you have to do is just tuck this back, and then you would just lay down the part that you need in water. Just make sure that the back is not in the way, and you would just float this, okay? But it would be a lot easier if you had a riser for your embroidering machine. Um, and matter of fact, let me shut off the, uh, the video and show you guys what a riser looks like in case any of you guys don't know. Okay, guys, I am back. I got the, my brother SC1900 and I put it on a riser and I also have my embroidery, uh, bed on the machine. Okay. Cause I just wanted to show you guys for those that don't know what an embroidery riser is. It is actually something right here that um, it's, it's just a piece of furniture that people put underneath their machine. So that way it has this space right here. It's like an arm, okay? So let me um, lower it so that you guys can see it from a different angle because um, this will probably help. Okay, so um, lift it right here. There you go. I think this works. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this. What it does is it gives you a little arm. I'm sorry, I know I'm in the way, and I changed because I, I looked a mess. I think I look a little better. Anyway, this is like an arm, see? So what you would do is if you had something big like this, like a laundry bag, right? And you go ahead and you put your hoop. Let me get a hoop to show you guys. All right, let's say we have this hoop, right? And I got my sewing put on here, but let me just take this out for now. And let me just turn this on so you guys can see. I mean, I'm not gonna embroider anything on it. I just wanna show you guys how you would do it if you wanted to use a single needle machine and you had a riser, okay? So let's just make believe. We're gonna make believe I have my embroidery foot on here and all that kind of good stuff and I got my file on here, okay? Um, you could use either your Five and five and a half uh, by twelve uh, hoop, or your five by seven. 
okay? Now the five and a half by 12, of course, is going to be a little longer, so you may want to double check. As a matter of fact, let's double check together, okay? Let's see if we can do that together. Um, where's my five? Five and a half by 12. Here is my, my magnetic hoop. Okay, I got my magnetic hoop that's a five and a half by 12. And I'm sorry, I know I'm only there, but I'm not gonna retake this, okay? I'm raw, okay? My videos are all raw. So as you can see, it will definitely work, okay? Because this goes in here, and then what you would do is you would float your item on here. Now, if you guys don't know how to use a five and a half by 12 uh, magnetic hoop on your single needle machine, um, in my channel, I do have one, okay? I have a video on how to use the regular five and a half by 12 repositional hoop. Remember, this is a repositional hoop, okay? And I also, this is the mag, uh, magnetic five and a half by 12 repositional hoop. So I have videos on how to use both, okay? So what you would do is, of course, you would just, um, you know, float this and you would put it on there and you would put it in the machine. But let me show you how you do it. Now, first of all, you would have, whether it's this or, or the five and five, you know, five by seven hoop, you would put it on your machine, right? So let's just snap that, because I know that'll fit. All right, so I'm gonna snap this in, okay? And then what would happen is you're gonna float this item, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your your laundry bag that you're going to water, and then you're just going to put it under here. Now, just wanted to demonstrate to you, this is why a lot of people like to invest on risers. Because when you are working on things such as this, this whole design would fit in the 5x7 hoop, so there's no reason for you to use a... 5 by 12 unless you want the lettering to be bigger, okay? And then it surpasses the 5 by 7 um, space on the hoop. Then you would use the 5 by 12. But see how easy this is? It's kind of very similar to a multi-needle machine. Multi-needle machines have arms. And I'm going to show you right here. I know I'm probably all in the way. See the arm? So that's how they, you know, when we go and we hoop it, the back of the item goes underneath the arm. Okay, so basically, if you really think about it, when you are using a riser with a single needle machine, what you're doing is you're creating your own arm. This kind of like converts this as an arm. However, the only issue with the single needle machine is, I'm going to pull this out, is that even though you can lift the machine, it will never change the size of, I don't know what it is that this is called but this will always be this size. So whatever the opening is, it has to be big enough so that you can move within this space right here, okay? But a laundry bag is so huge that you could put it in there and you can embroider it and you don't have to worry about getting the back of this caught up with this, okay? Now, do you need a riser to do this? No, you don't. This is just a nice have. It's not something you need to have, okay? Um, what you can do, let's make believe the riser is not here. You just take this, push the back out of the way, and then you push this right underneath. And then you just make double sure that the back of the, the, the bag is not underneath the needle. Because remember, you just want to border the front of the bag, not the back. So you can do it. It's doable. It's just making sure that you are maneuvering the item correctly underneath the needle and you have it correctly put on the hoop. Okay? So I just wanted to um, share that with you guys because I know there's a lot of folks out there that have single needles. And, you know, I, you know, some people, they have the impression, oh, after you have a single needle, you have to jump over to a multi-needle machine and, and you can't, you know, you can't really do much with a single needle. That is so not true. They have other machines with bigger hoops 
okay? And they're just as functional. Trust me, people do run businesses with the single needle machines too, okay? So, I mean, if, if they weren't any good, there wouldn't be a market for it. That's all I say. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay, so let's go back over here. Um, and I'm going to do my multi-needle machine. I spend bucks on those multi-needle machines, so I got to make the best use out of them, you know? All right, so... Um, I know I moved this bag around a lot, but I taped my item pretty good, so I know I'm good. All right, so I'm going to hoop this. This is the bottom of the hoop. I'm going to use this because I know there's more than enough space on here. Okay, so this is the back of the hoop, so I'm just going to place it on here. And what I will do is I will put the stabilizer on afterwards i don't have to put it on together i can just well you know what let me put it on now because now i'm thinking about it it's, it's going to get hard to put my hand in there so let, it doesn't hurt to put it on now stop being lazy sometimes if you're lazy then things just get more complicated for you okay so i just want to make sure that okay this is the end of the hoop this is the end of the hoop that's fine. I have my picture here so I can twist and turn this so to make sure that it's well aligned. So I'm not worried about it being like super duper straight. Doesn't have to be as long as my template is on exactly where it's supposed to be. I'm good. All right. So let me see. Put this this way. And then here we go. There you go. Got it. All right. Yep, perfect. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the machine and I'm going to uh, end water. I'm going to use my six needle machine. I've been using that a lot lately. Um, I think it's, it's a little love that I have for this machine and stuff. But the thing is, if I don't have more than six colors, it, you know, it's something that. You know, I, I'll, I'll always grab onto the uh, the small machine and stuff. Now, as always, you know, I'm up early in the morning and stuff because I'm trying to get all the gifts done. Um, this is a little cleaning kit that I have. And I got my oil. You should always oil the machine in, before you start anything and always clean the area too which is what I do because I have been embroidering a lot yesterday. But a lot of times what I do, yeah, see, I still have some in there, is before, when I shut down my machines, before I go to bed, um, I always clean out the area just so that I can get it. See, it had yellow thread because I did a beach towel on here. And there we go. I like to clean this stuff. And then... Now I'm going to oil it. There we go. Just put one drop of oil. Now, if you have an SC1900, you do not oil that machine. Um, what you should be doing is taking it in to get um, service on an annual basis because the machine does need oil, okay? But what happens is the technicians, what they do is they actually take these machines apart. They take out all the covers. And there are certain sections that you oil that you can't reach. And that's the case with the SC1900. Because my technician does oil it. But it doesn't have to be oiled as often. So, as long as you are taking the machine in once a year, you're good to go. Um, I have the technician come over and work on all my machines on an annual basis. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it works out. All right, so, okay, I had a smaller hoop in here before, so I have to adjust my frame size here. And always when you adjust these things, make sure that you are, they're tight, okay? The last thing you want is for these, for you not to do it tight. That happened to me. Um, once when I was embroidering, I did not make sure that these things were tight. It started to embroider and then it really, it acted up and 
Yeah, it was a bit. Okay, so just lesson learned. You know, we want to pass it on because things happen, you know, and stuff. All right, and then one of the things that I always do is I, I always feel the arm to make sure things are right where I want it. Okay, now. Oh boy, okay. So I am going to take my file, okay, and hold on, I am at my machine right now. I know, I know you guys don't see me, sorry, but here I am. I'm working here. And then um, what I'm doing is I am saving this on my full, my uh, USB, okay? So now that I got that, and of course, you know, you're supposed to eject it, but I just don't. Bad. Bad. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the file. Let me do a thing because I want to make sure that it fits in the hoop and it will. It's fine. Now what I just need to do is make sure that I have it aligned correctly as I have the paper on here because it's not aligned correctly. So um, I'm going to move it over. There we go. Move it down. Down to the middle of that X. Okay, I'm going to make sure I can go up and down. Yeah. There we go. And sideways. Yep. Perfect. Right. That's the center. Okay. So now that I've got this on the center point, I do have to change my um, thread because I did not put the right thread in the machine. I didn't change the thread yet. So... Um, let me just cut this and put in, I really want, I like this, uh, I call, I call them multi-color threads. Um, I know there's a name, Venegrated, whatever, God, my pronunciation is so bad, it's so bad, but okay, I'm going to change my thread. out to this one I think it's gonna come out really cute okay now that I've already checked and I can you know well I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna check it again because I, I know I've already checked I know this is gonna embroider exactly where I want it to be I have the thread that I need and everything so I am going to take all this out And then let it do its thing.
finished. Looks pretty good. Got a little bit of puckering going on over here, but I think that's my fault because I didn't make sure that this was super tight in here. I should have pulled um, to make sure it was tight, but that's okay. I mean, it's a laundry bag. Um, it's not like it has to be totally flat or that it's ever really going to be flat. So let's see. Let's take this off. Let's, let me give you a good look of it. Look at how nice. I really like that thread. I mean, it's it really, when it comes to personalization using that thread, it's really, really nice. It really does look nice. So let's go over to the table and let's um, take it apart. Let's see, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Am I, am I in a good area? Okay, this is what I, okay, let's throw that out. All right, let me, um, make sure, yeah. Yeah, you can see, you can see. Let me lift you up just a little bit. There you go. All right, so let me uh, take this out. I'm gonna take this off the hoop. All right, the top, and pull out the bottom. Nice. The words facing each other. Okay, now let me turn this around. Well, I don't really have to turn it around because this is tear away, so I can just tear this off. I'm not going to put any tender touch or anything behind it. I don't have to. It's a laundry bag. Um, nobody's wearing it. Okay. Now let's take a look at what it really looks like. It looks good. What do you guys think? Nice. Yeah. Looks good. I think he's going to like it. This is really great gift for a college student. Really great gift. Because when they're in the dorms, they got to wash their own clothes. So. <laughs> and uh, the, I think this bag is really neat. I really love and I'll put the link in the video where I actually got this backpack so that you guys can see. They, I believe they have other colors as well. So um, I really like that this has the straps so you can carry it both ways. It has the straps in the back so they can carry it on their back. And they also have like a little handle here as well. So they can also carry it using a handle. So I think this is really neat. And, you know, putting the personalization, the um, student's name, on it um that gives it a really nice touch i think it really does give it a nice touch and stuff like that and i really like this thread i think this thread really pops especially with the the colors in this bag and stuff like that so anyway guys i hope you guys like this video if you do please give it a thumbs up um you know i like to incorporate people that use single needle machines and multi needle machines in my videos and stuff they are kind of raw i know i'm sorry i was walking around a lot and stuff but you know, I'm not into the fancy videoing. I just like to give you guys the 411 so that way you guys can go off and do great things, okay? So if you guys like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Um, I do embroidery happy hours at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time as well. For those that, you know, have questions about embroidering or just want to meet other people that do this type of embroidering as well. I mean, it's a great place for us to um, talk. You know, it's a great community. And I also have a Facebook uh, page that's called Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. Join the Facebook group, show off your projects, stuff like that. And, you know, if you have questions, it's also a, a nice place to go and ask for help as well. So talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoy it and you guys have a great week. Talk to you guys later. Bye.